Listen, at the end of the day, you never want to get on Coach K's bad side, and Michael DeVoe found that out the hard way as Georgia Tech took the L against the Blue Devils. We'll talk about that and the rest of the ACC men's squads who got a little action last night, a couple wins for some, a couple losses for others. You know how it goes. We also got A.J. Black in the building. We're going to talk about some football stuff. Kenny Pickett and Sam Howard are going to the Senior Bowl. What will it look like for these two as they're trying to get on some teams? Maybe they'll be starters. Maybe they should play the back seat for a couple of seasons. We'll find out and talk about it all here on today's show. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Locked on ACC. My name is Candace Cooper. I am your host every single day. Sometimes I have guests and most of the times I have a co-host. But in this first segment, it's all me flying solo. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. So excited to give you guys a good scoop of stuff. All right, let's get it rolling. So as I mentioned at the top of the show, Michael DeBeau of Georgia Tech found out the hard way that you can't really talk junk to Coach K if you don't want him to come right back at you. The Georgia Tech Blue, Blue Devils, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets lost last night 69-57 at Cameron Indoor as the number two Blue Devils shook off what was a little COVID you know, protocol where they weren't exactly in the best fit of shape, but they were able to handle things and put it away and get their second win of the ACC play this season as Georgia Tech fell 0-3. This year so far, they are not doing what we thought the former ACC champions would do. But, you know, there's still a lot of season left to play. But that's neither here nor there. The game seems to be the most minimal thing out of this entire situation. As I had mentioned, Michael DeVoe, one of the top scorers on the Yellow Jackets, got into a little scuffle towards the end of the game. And by scuffle, I mean a little tussle. By tussle, I mean there was just an exchange of words. So how it went down. As you're getting ready to call a timeout, Coach K, you get your hands up to go. Michael DeVoe points his finger, and Coach K took it as him pointing his finger at him. So what did he do? He went up to Michael and said, listen, uh, what was that about? And he probably didn't say it just like that, but along those lines. And so Michael DeVoe you know, politely said, listen, it was not a big thing in his post-game conference. It really was just me being a competitor. I apologize. My, you know, conversations in my directions were more towards the bench rather than Coach K himself. I have the utmost respect for him, and it was never any intention to be disrespectful towards Coach K. Coach K talked to Coach Pastner after the game and explained the situation. Coach Pastner of Georgia Tech said he didn't really understand what had happened, but he knows DeVoe to be a very upstanding young man and knows that he would never do anything intentional to be disrespectful towards what everyone, some people call the greatest person to ever bring college basketball to, you know, the main stage. So all that to say, my best advice, always point to players. You know what I'm saying? Keep all that energy towards player. Get eye focus. Never get into Coach K because this is not the first time he's ever said something to an opposing player, but it probably won't be the last. But I understand heat of the moment, things get the best of you, and at the end of the day, you just want to win. And Georgia Tech definitely had the opportunity to be in games, but we saw a couple of missed cues, certainly some bad decisions, a horrible alley-oop when it came to the blue, the Yellow Jackets during the game. I think they got a little too big for their britches. And it was unfortunate because I think they had an opportunity to be in the game until they weren't. And they, you had the Blue Devils coming in. The fact that they were coming off the COVID pause, they had not worked out until about two games. They were not in any sort of great condition. And you certainly could have taken advantage of that. They did not do so. So now we have Luke Duke sitting 2-0. and oh, And you have the Yellow Jackets 0-3. Oh, and, and that's how the chips now, when it comes to other teams in the ACC, let's talk about some games that happened on Tuesday. Wake Forest was able to pull out another win, and they mightily beat Florida State. They snapped a four-game skid, beating the Seminoles 76-54, to thanks to Jake LaRavia. So I'm working on names. You know, we all talk about that every time. Had 22 points, while Alondez Williams added 20, while Wake pulled away very early and was boat racing the Seminoles again. 76 to 54 on Tuesday night. Wake is now two and two in the comp two and two in conference play. And they avenged that overtime loss that they had received last season. And I talked about how Wake Forest 
was in games all last year. They just weren't able to pull it off. And now you see them slowly finding their way, finding their groove, finding the fact that Coach Forbes tried to tell y'all, you know, back at the tip off, we are nobody to play with. Now that I actually can talk to my players and we don't have to do everything virtual, we're not practicing, you know, via Zoom, there's a whole different ball game. And you can just see that on the floor every single night. Wake's going to give it to you, and I feel like every team should be put on notice, and that's certainly what the Seminoles were last night. Again, they're trying to just regroup and refocus as they'll have to face Louisville on Saturday, while the Demon Deacons will face Syracuse, a team that has certainly looked to find its identity a little bit more after coming off a loss against Virginia. Speaking of Virginia, we had a great game last night against Clemson. The Clemson Tigers were a little all but close, but then not. A 75-65 victory for the Cavaliers. You had Armand Franklin really able to go off as well as other players. Jaden Gardner doing his thing. And all for not keep Kaihi Clark is certainly is still one of the most valuable players, according to his teammates, when it comes to being in that game. And, of course, Virginia coming off a loss they had to the Tigers on December 22nd, second time they played them. They regrouped, they figured it out, and ended an 11-game win streak in the series. And the Cavaliers won six straight against Clemson Tigers in South Carolina. Now, the Cavaliers definitely were figuring it out. We know this is a game of runs, but they were able to close out with a 19-8 and run when Gardner made six free throws during that stretch as well. It certainly helps put you in the conversation to win a game. Three and one now the Cavaliers are sitting in ACC play as Clemson is one and two and they are trying to regroup and refocus and they play North Carolina State on Saturday. <laughs> and what do you know? NC State picking up its first ACC win of the season as they beat Virginia Tech in Blacksburg 68-63. Now, I know you're saying, man, where has this been for State? Yeah, me too. I think it's been one of those situations where we've been waiting for the Wolfpack to finally be everything we knew they could when they were in games against Purdue, when they were in opportunities against Louisville. We definitely saw flashes of what a good NC State team could be. That loss against Florida State, I'm certain, will come back to haunt them, as I had just mentioned, how they got blown out by Wake Forest. It's now super frustrating, I'm sure, for the Wolfpack. The State came out with a 7-0 lead. They were able to open up as much as 20 a 29-19 lead before the Hokies went on a run. And, of course, being at home, the George, Virginia Tech is always a team to struggle against because you know that they're going to have the energy from the crowd to help them propel. But NC State responded with a 18-2 and run, and they were able to figure it out and hold off. And that's one of the biggest things that they've struggled with is closing games out. And I think for them – it's a big notch on the belt. Everybody gets, you know, a scoop of ice cream and we all can just be happy. It wasn't the best offensive performance of the game, offensive performance that we've seen from the pack so far. But again, Quavion Smith figuring it out. As soon as, you know, we get my guy Sebron to just really hone in and make those shots consistently night in and night out going to be a force. Jericho Hellums definitely knows how to get those double figures when needed, scoring 15 on the night. So I say... As much as people are nervous about NC State, maybe let's pump the brakes. Maybe let's not call for Coach Keith's job. Let's just relax for 2.5, and we can come too, right? I think everyone just needs to take a deep breath. <laughs> you know, at times, we're always ready for someone to get out of this thing, but having Manny Bates being out and still being able to rally around this young squad really is a testament to who Coach Keats is and what he'll be able to continue to do for this team. So we've got to switch gears and talk a little bit about football, but I know you guys are eager to hear some more about Built Bar. Now, if you have not yet had your New Year's resolution set, I promise you getting fit certainly should add to your list. Built Bar can be one of those protein treats that makes you feel good about yourself as you're trying to resolve some of this weight gain, maybe a little love gain you had during the winter season. Built Bar is a protein bar that tastes just like candy, and it makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good you want to eat it, unlike other protein bars that are chalky or waxy or taste like a chemical spiel. You want to eat healthy, but it just gets boring. So by week three, you might be thinking, this is just not worth it. Where's the chocolate? Well, let me tell you, Built Bar is 100% covered in real chocolate. Most Built Bars have 130 calories, only 40 
five grams of sugar and four to five net carbs. Here's an idea for the new year. Go over all of your secret stashes, add a built bar in there and enjoy a good treat. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. Again, LOCK15, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 for 15% off at built.com. All right, Locked On ACC fans, more importantly, if you have a team that you love here in our conference, we have an incredible app everyone who buys gas needs to know about, and it's called Get Upside. My listeners are making up to 25 cents for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free app, Get Upside, one word, in the App Store or Google Play right now. Use promo code SCORE and get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's up to 50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back by using GetUpside when you download the app for free and use promo code SCORE to get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. Again, that's GetUpside app using promo code S-C-O-R-E to get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. <laughs> 